begins again. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. How you doing? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem over on Spotify, iTunes, and even on YouTube. Get on over there and get in the conversation. We make sure to premiere the videos. That way you can get in the chat room and chat with everybody. And also on Facebook, I got to get a big shout out to my Facebook fans. It's going to be one of them shows today. Wait until you see some of the stuff coming out of New Jersey. Yeah, the media is at it again. But, but. The guy who sent me the article, he wanted me to be, you know, down the middle, or as they say, fair and violence. So I'm going to take a shot at that. <laughs> the article has to do with the pagans. The newspaper came out and called them menace to society. Well, actually, not the newspaper. They just rewrit what uh, the crime commission had to say. But the guy said... I want you to be totally honest. Do you approve of some of the stuff they had to say? So I'm going to be covering that in my monologue. Also, before I forget, it's funny. I just got done uh, with the premiere of the Hollywood and Chinatown show over on the YouTube channel and all the radio stuff. And boy, are we getting some reviews. See, me and China Dow, we are just going all out, being real, talking personal stuff, and talking about some subjects, boy. We've covered the swinger lifestyle. We've covered freaking, hey, the size matter to a woman. We are hitting it hard over there. So if you have not gone over there and subscribed on the YouTube channel, something's wrong with you. Something's wrong. It is all grimy and greasy over there. It's all real. <laughs> Howard Stern and Ma, Ma, what is it? Uh, man, Kyle, you got nothing on us, man. Nothing. I'm sorry to say you guys are freaking old fogies compared to what's going on over there at the Hollywood and China Dial show. It is so raw that one of the podcast pro, uh, platforms said, nope, denied. <laughs> it happens when you start talking real. These platforms cannot take subjects that they don't agree with. We get throttled down all the time on the channels. <laughs> One thing uh, I always try to tell people is hit that bell. That way you know if something's coming out. And it also lets me know if they're passing our stuff on to you. A lot of the videos that we do on YouTube don't make it out to the general public much. They don't recommend it because I guess I do not fit the mold. Well, one thing I always said when I was going to do this radio show, it's going to be real. I'm going to let the opinions out. Use your personal stuff too. Let everybody get to know you. That way... They feel like they belong. Now, I love all my subscribers that are, you know, a part of the throttle, baby. I really do. Even though some of them get dumb. Some of them get dumb. You know, the video I did uh, yesterday or the show, you know, we had the leftists out there. You know, they didn't like how, you know, I got on that ass. So they had a, you know, get in mind. It works both ways. I get it. I get it. You'll see it in the comment sections over on YouTube and even Facebook. It's funny. So many people don't even watch the video. They just comment off the title. Like uh, this one. It's called Menace to Society. It seems that the local law enforcement, by the way, Whatever you say, I can get you back. Remember the wall of shame with Corey Graff. Yeah, we should we we expose you your hypocrisy on the subject, baby. Yeah, we do. But anyway, they're basically calling the pagans gangsters. That's what they're calling them. You know, they're trying to put them right there with MS-13, the syndicate, all that jive. Law enforcement's got a hard on for them. Now, to be real and honest, 
when you do see these news articles, do you ever see, do you ever see clubs going after civilians or clubs doing drive-by shootings on civilians? No, you don't. Most of the time, most of the time, you will see that it's club on club related. They don't do anything to civilians. Yeah, you know, a couple, you know, I am more than a couple. I got to be honest, got uh, in the crossfire in Waco. That wasn't the best, you know, example of what I'm trying to talk about. There was kids there. There was families there eating. Next thing you know, a shootout's happening. Did not make clubs look good at that point. We can argue the circumstances around it, and we have. Oh, boy, have we, because we covered it a lot of how everything went down. Yeah, the cops knew about it. Yes, they had freaking informants telling them about it, uh, but they didn't do nothing. So it was sad that civilians got caught in the crossfire. No civilians got killed there. I think it's very important to bring that up. No civilians got hurt. So back to the club on club violence. Are they a menace to society? You know, that's the title of this uh, segment. Only if civilians get involved. Now, I must say that there are members in a club, and 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not the club that tells them to do it. But if they're out there slinging, yeah, then you could say that they're hurting civilians. I cannot lie about that one. I'm not, and by the way, I'm not a cheerleader for clubs. I get a lot of that where they say, you know, a lot of people say, hey, I'm a propaganda tool. I'm far from a propaganda tool for clubs. I try to present the news the best I can, give my opinions the best I can without taking sides. Of course, you know, I do have biases and I'll be the first one to say that. But in general, I support motorcycle clubs. I support the right to wear their patches. I support the right to be able to hang around each other. Because what I see from articles like this, and especially down in Texas where old boy got busted with that pistol and it was legal from the start and now all of a sudden he's a gang member, is law enforcement is moving more towards this gang enhancement stuff. They're using the DOJ to do it. Now I know. Well, you're this kind of supporter. You know, look what he's doing. It's his uh, DOJ. You know what? This stuff started way before when they were listing clubs as gangs. So don't even go there. Again, be real with yourself if you want the information. Go look at it yourself when they were put on the, the gang uh, list. So with the gang list comes all this other profiling issues. A lot of rights are taken away. And I only can speak to the stuff I see here in the United States with as far as rights. Because God forbid. And I actually do feel sorry for guys out in Australia, in Canada, but it's a whole different system of government, it's a whole different culture out there. Now, if you ask me, do I support some of the stuff I see in the newspapers over in Australia? Well, no, I don't. You got drive-bys going on, you got Molotov cocktails going through tattoo windows. Now, you cannot say and I'm going to have to defend some of the media reporting over there. You cannot say a lot of the stuff they are putting in that paper is BS. And you know why? Here in the United States, you do not see a lot of bikers running around with Mercedes, Humvees, million-dollar houses. 
Do you really think people are that stupid? Oh, you know, I'm over here. I'm a motorcycle builder. Yeah, uh -huh, baby. You got a million dollar house sitting there with a brand new Mercedes out in front. Who are you trying to fool? Be real with everybody else if you want to go that route. It is gangsterism over there. And I know I might take some, you know, heat from our Aussie listeners and those in New Zealand. Yeah, I understand that. But I also like for you guys to be real when you're talking about it. Do you think bikers are really going to have million dollar houses? Do you, what, did they, did they win the lottery or something like that? They're basically stars over in Australia because they're always in the damn news. The problem is, like John Gotti found out, you cannot walk around and get all the publicity and all that stuff. For Christ's sakes, they have their Instagram accounts all over. The, anytime one of them posts something, it's on the freaking news. It's like a freaking soap opera sometimes. So I hate to see clubs and their members suffer for the actions of a few. Because I say time and time again, hey, you know what? These guys get up in the morning, they go to work, they put in a good day's hard work, they're just trying to support their family, they want to hang around their buddies, they want to go ride their motorcycles, and most of the time, nobody wants to hurt anybody. Then, again, I'm going to say, you got those idiots that do dumb stuff, and they put them in the crosshairs of the feds and the DOJ. If you really want to be real about it, most of the clubs that are out there now, and the reason why they're on the list, is because of the reputation from decades ago. We're talking decades Something popped off in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Whoop! You're on that gang task force list because this club killed this one. This guy got rico This club got rico It's mostly out of the past. I think uh, the last RICO case, or, you know, there is, I can't say that because there's one ongoing, I believe, in California. Uh, but the big one was when the federal government rico the whole damn Mongo freaking club for no reason. I'm still flabbergasted by that one. How and you? How are you going to freaking Rico a whole entire freaking club when most don't even have criminal records? So now what you're doing by doing that is putting a target on their backs for law enforcement. That's one of the reasons why the judge was iffy about taking their freaking collars away because what, you're going to pull them off on them, uh, you know, and a cop pulls them over? That's dangerous business right there. But then you're going to come back and say, well, having some of them deserved the attention? Well, yeah. Anybody, and I mean anybody, freaking club or independent, uh, regular citizen Q, if you're out there slinging uh, stuff, yeah, you're going to target yourself. My problem with all that is, is when you bring the heat down on everybody else that has no freaking involvement whatsoever. The first thing Leo does is they go after the club as a whole because that person is wearing their patch. That ain't right. It's not to me anyway. Every club now knows that and it's kind of funny because people are going to yell at me hey you know you're always talking about these leo clubs and blah 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 uh at least these clubs know that cops are in there but they go off on that well one percent of clubs have cops in there and they don't even know about it very true very true i cannot argue that point because that is a fact many of these one percenter clubs have freaking Law enforcement undercover. Why? Because they got that reputation or 
a member. They get freaking butt hurt over a decision. Next thing you know, they run to the feds because they're a part of this big time club and he can get somebody for selling this and selling that. That right there is a sad state of affairs when they cannot freaking accept the responsibility of the decision they made. Now, I actually agree with some people that you see people that are in one percenter clubs, they act a certain way when they're around their brothers, or they get this attitude or patch power, it's called. But as soon as the hammer drops, it's not like that anymore. They're either running their mouth. There is a lot that take the punishment, but they're either running their mouth, making deals with the government. What happened to that 1% way of thinking? That just goes out the door. And a lot of people nowadays, they're more technological. They get their news. They get uh, you know, their research done on their own. And they look at them, you know, they look at the situation and say, well, wait a second here. You were all tough and bad. You're over there telling this club that they can't wear a patch or telling this one that, hey, you can't do this and do that. But once the heat come, came down, you ratted. And a lot of people are, you know, they always use the famous uh, snitches uh, end up in ditches. Well, that ain't true anymore. Nothing ever happens to a rat. I have to say, you know, maybe I agree with that because why would a club want to do something when the technology is so freaking advanced that they'll get caught within a freaking day or two? I've done stories about club members trying to retaliate or do something uh, with another club and boom, they're busted within freaking uh, the day or day after, man. It's quick. You can't do that anymore. That's why a lot of the one percenter clubs, and I've heard this many a times from many different ones, tell their members, you get caught, you're on your own. Because we're tired of paying all the lawyer fees and all that jive and getting the freaking blowback from what individual members are doing. I've heard it for many, many clubs. Some of them are actually, t they saved the money from the lawyers and they got all kinds of other, they invested in legal stuff. Because they don't want to be bothered by that. Because RICO is no damn joke, man. All they have to do is get a predicate and next thing you know, you're ending up in a RICO freaking case. Where 98% of the time, the feds win. Now they lost their asses with the Vagos because they stuck together. Not a lot of clubs stick together, and I'm sorry to say that. Sorry to say. All you have to do is go through our archive over at HarleyLiberty.com and see that for yourself. That is, again, a sad state of affairs, but that's the times we're living in. It used to be where this, this was everything to a club member. But now... People realize that, hey, I got families I got to take care of. I got to do this. I got to do that. You know, I got a eight-year-old boy. I'm not going to go to prison. And next time I see him, he's 35 years old because it's just not worth it. That's the kind of stuff I think about when I see the article that I'm going to be covering. I always put it in the back of my mind. You know what? They're really blowing this out of proportion. I got to ask the question, though. If it is true, are they hurting civilians? Or are they just going club on club? And if they're just going on club on club, what's the freaking matter? That's just like I say when people say, well, clubs need to come together. That is the freaking most ass nine freaking thing that you'll ever freaking say because it's just not going to happen. Never will. Yeah, there's been peace accords and stuff like that, but they lasted, what, all of 15 minutes or something? It's just the way it is. I get Leo's freaking point. Uh, and that's something that, you know, I rarely do. If you got this guy representing the club, 
and there's this kind of violence and stuff, and you got to do your job. That's basically the only thing I agree with. I've always said that, hey, there was always used to be a line. Bikers on one side, cops on the other, even though now that line is very blurred. I would have never seen the day where you would see bikers back the blue, as they say. <laughs> Anyway, let's get into the news and let's get into this article that I'm talking about right after this. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari, host of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Check me out over on Instagram at Insane Throttle Biker News and join in on the discussion over on our YouTube channel at Insane Throttle Biker News Radio Show. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out. Mwah. New Jersey.com, baby. This is the story I was telling you about. Pagan's biker gang is a growing threat to the public in New Jersey. Now, in my monologue, I said usually it's friggin' club on club stuff, but this is how they're portraying it in the media. Here's how officials believe it can be stopped. This was updated at 9, what, 54 a.m. They actually did two updates. Uh, this by Alex, the Pagans Motorcycle Club, one of the major outlaw motorcycle groups in the U.S., is a growing threat to citizens in New Jersey. And every cop in the state should be trained to deal with them. Maybe they need to start training where they don't have this police brutality and we wouldn't have the mess we got in this country right now with all these damn stupid riots. According to a new report issued, members of the Pagans who have doubled their chapters statewide in the past three years have conducted numerous assaults against members of the public, some of whom have no con uh, connection to the club. I would like to see this. Maybe I need to read this New Jersey Commission of Investigations crime report. I cannot believe that. I really don't. Quote, this newfound level of aggression has led to drive-by shootings, savage beatdowns of adversaries, and unprovoked physical assault on members of the public across New Jersey. Last one I cannot believe. I don't believe that one. I, really, I truly don't believe that. The report was issued following a lengthy investigation focused on the pagans, which has been identified by the FBI as one of the four major outlaw motorcycle gangs. That group includes the Hells Angels, the Outlaws, and the Banditos. Well, there, you know, there's more than just four now. Uh, the see, they don't even get their information right. The commission recommended that the state attorney general's office create a working group comprised of law enforcement officials at every level devoted to identifying and prosecuting criminal activity conducted by outlaw motorcycle gangs. Sounds like, sounds like Strike Force Raptor, don't it, over in Australia. They're starting to take their cues from overseas. Sounds right here, a working group. So it's basically going to be the BET, a biker enforcement team. The agency also said every officer in New Jersey should undergo training in case they encounter these gangs. Last time I checked, it was law enforcement that started with the pagans. You know, they get, they were beating on them and all that stuff in the bar in, what was it, Pennsylvania or something? It was law enforcement undercovers that started this, not the pagans. Maybe club members should have training against Leo. In October of 2019, the State Commission of Investigation, an independent state watchdog, my balls independent, formed in, the, it's just like the freaking uh, Chicago Crime Commission out here. Yeah, independent, my ass. Formed in the late 1960s to investigate public corruption and organized crime. 
held an exhaustive hearing in Treden detailing how the pagans are increasing membership in all corners of the state. Well, any organization that has memberships want to do that. The Moose, the freaking Elks, they do it. The hearing featured testimony from SCI investigators, New Jersey state police officers, and county prosecutors. It included interviews with pagan members, their voices altered to protect their identities, and a video of a brutal attack in 2018 near a Hells Angels clubhouse in Newark. The rivals, again, club on club. The most climatic moment came at the hearing's end when the three reputed leaders of the motorcycle club were called to testify, citing their uh, Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. The alleged leaders declined to answer any of the commissioner's questions. That was awesome, I think. They just got butt hurt that they didn't answer questions. Hugo Zora Neves, the alleged vice president of the Pagans, broke his silence to say, it is not the policy of this club to engage in any criminal activity. It says it right there. It's not the club. It's people that go out on their own. It's not directed by the club as a whole. That's why they try to get people to get Ricoed, man, <laughs> because they're saying the organization's doing it when in actuality it's just freaking a couple guys. There are 900 pagans spread across 12 states and in Puerto Rico, officials said. In New Jersey, pagan membership, which has always been strong in South Jersey, has grown at an alarming rate in recent years with 200 members in 17 chapters. Now, how would you know that? You're just estimating. There has been a 50% increase in chapters in New Jersey over the past three years. Quote, it's expanding at a rate we've never seen before. Edwin Torres, an SCI investigative agent, said in reference to pagan membership in New Jersey. In New Jersey, it's going to be hard to find a county where there isn't a pagan present. Well, you know, it's hard to freaking not find a freaking layo around every damn corner, but I don't complain. The uptick in pagan membership in New Jersey, first reported by NJ Advanced Media, yeah, there you go, uh, in May of 2018, is indicative of a broader national effort by reputed pagan president Keith Conan Richter to beef up numbers along the East Coast. Officials said Richter, who was sentenced to 16 years in prison in 98 for attempted murder and racketeering and released in 2012, took control of the Pagans in 2018. Well, how do you know that? You might just be slandering somebody right now in the media. Under the control of Richter, the Pagans have been absorbing smaller local motorcycle clubs to increase membership, officials say. The Pagans also started recruiting members from traditional street gangs like the Bloods, Crips, and the Latin Kings. Do you really believe that? That's all I have to say on that until the final thoughts here. Now, remember the story I did yesterday about the media claiming that there was 250,000 coronavirus cases? From a study, by the way, not actual hard numbers. From a Germany firm. Came out of Germany. Anyway. From Reason. Elizabeth Nolan Brown. Gotta love this one. She's good. I like this. No. The Sturgis Motorcycle Rally didn't spawn 250,000 coronavirus cases. Plus. FDA metals more in the vaping market. Oh, you know, that's part of it. Oh, I like that. Friggin' picture. That's funny as hell right there. Uh, here's what we were told. An August motorcycle rally in Sturgis, South Dakota, helped spread COVID-19 to more than a quarter million Americans, making it the root of about 20% of all new coronavirus cases in the U.S. last month. So said a new white paper from the IZA Institute of Labor Economics. Don't forget to put in there that it was, a, it was based in Germany. At least 
and national news outlets ran with it. Well, of course they did, because they don't like bikers. Quote, the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally was super spreading event that cost public health $2.2 billion, tweeted the Hill. You know what? I don't like the Hill either. The Sturgis Motorcycle Rally held in South Dakota last month may have caused 250000 That according to NBC. Boy, did they run with it, the media. If you haven't seen this story, I don't know where the hell you're at. Well, the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally represents a situation where many of the worst case scenarios for super spreading occurred simultaneously. The researchers write in the new paper titled The Contagion Externality of a Super Spreading Event, The Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. <laughs> that was their title. Not so fast, she says. Let's take a look at what they actually tracked and what's mere speculation. I love facts, baby. According to the South Dakota health officials, which I'll believe South Dakota because they're freaking governors. Not only is she hot, but she really has got that going on up there. 124 new cases in the state, including one fatal case, were directly linked to the rally. 124. Overall... COVID-19 cases linked to the Sturgis rally were reported in 11 states as of September 2nd to a tune of at least 260 new cases. I love this next one. There were very well may be more cases that have been linked to the early August event, but so far that's only 260 confirmed cases, about 0.1% of the number the ISA paper offers. 0.1%. And that's August. It, there's usually that two-week mall. So where's all the cases at? I don't see them in the numbers. It's freaking already uh, going on the second week of September almost. A month later, you'd be hearing about all these damn numbers. To get to the astronomical number of cases allegedly spread by it because of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally, the researchers analyzed autonomized cell phone data to track the smartphone pings from non-residents and movement of those before and after the event. You better check your phones, man. Mine, I have it turned off where they can't do that. The study then, of course, it's, you know, Japanese, or what is it, Chinese made, they're probably doing it anyway. The study then linked those who attended and traveled back to their home states and compared changes in coronavirus trends after the rally's conclusion. Essentially, the re researchers assumed that new spikes in cases in areas where people went post-rally must have been caused by the rally attendees despite there being no particular evidence that this was the case. But again, the national news ran with it. The paper, which has not been peer-reviewed, oh, it wasn't reviewed by any peers, failed to account for <laughs> happenings like schools in South Dakota ha a reopening, among other things, that could have contributed to coronavirus spread in some of the studied areas. The researchers also assumed a 46000 price tag for each person affected to calculate the $12.2 billion public health costs of the event, but this figure would only make sense if every person had a severe case requiring hospitalization. The results of the ISA paper, quote, do not align with what we know, South Dakota, Joshua Clayton said. Oh, you gotta love it. Wait till you hear what Christy has to say, baby. Isn't science. It's fiction. It's also a good election time propaganda. Apparently, despite the dubious nature of the ISA study, a range of Democratic consultants and cheerleaders have been using it to condemn President Donald Trump. Didn't I say that's what it was all about in the last segment that we did on that? We did a whole show on that. Boy, did I go off on a tangent on this one. Sad state of affairs right here. I don't know if you guys have been following this, but I really love the... Uh, I really love this racer, Ralph Hudson. Uh, he died from injuries sustained in the Bonneville crash. Hudson was 69. Uh, he raced bikes almost entire life. 
uh, motorcycle racer Ralph Hudson, current uh, FIM uh, world record holder for the all-time fastest non-streamliner motorcycle at 297 miles an hour, died from injuries suffered three weeks ago at Bonneville, according to a statement released by the family. Hudson was competing for the SCTA Southern uh, California Timing Association record at Bonneville Speed Week on August 14th when he suffered a crash after exiting the time mile at a reported 252 miles an hour. A gust of wind sent him into a speed wobble, also known as a tank slapper, from which he did not recover. Hudson was flown to Intermountain Medical Center in Salt Lake City, where he was initially stabilized in the ICU, but finally succumbed to his injuries on Sunday, September 6. He was 69 years old. Hudson set the 297 mile per hour record in Bolivia. Quote, it has been Hudson's dream to set the record of at over 300 miles an hour, a dream he shared with fellow competitor and friend Al Lamb. Uh, the duel's back and forth battle in the quest for 300 has been an ongoing saga that captured the attention of the Lansby uh, community, especially when it took Hudson and Lamb all the way to Bolivia in 2017, the largest uh, salt flat in the world, uh, the Salar de Eugenie. Uh, which offers a, a much longer runway for racers at an altitude of 12,000 feet. Our uh, thoughts and prayers go off to uh, Ralph Hudson's family. Boy, was he a racer, baby. Uh, here we go up north. The Montreal Gazette. Paul Cherry. Man who tried to revive the rock machine biker gang assaulted behind bars. Jean Emmerd told the Parole Board of Canada in February to ignore warnings from police that his life was in danger. A former biker gang member who told the Parole Board of Canada in February to ignore warnings from police that his life was in danger was assaulted while behind bars five months later and had to be treated in a hospital. Jean Emmerd, 43, tried several years ago to revive the Rock Machine Biker Game, a criminal organization by the same name, was once part of an alliance that went to war with the Hells Angels in Quebec between 94 and 2002 over drug trafficking turf. That was a 90s war back then, baby. It went nuts. Near the end of the conflict, the flu, uh, few remaining members of the Rock Machine decided to become members of the Banditos, an American-based biker gang, and their former club's name disappeared. But in 2014, Emward suddenly emerged wearing the gang's name and colors and confirmed the reporters that he was reviving the Rock Machine. He's a liar. That stuff started in 2010 uh, in Peg City. Uh, four years uh, later, in March 2018, he received a 33-month sentence after he was convicted of uh, having possessed a firearm and drugs while parading around in the Rock Machine gang colors. Can we say stupidity right there? You don't do anything while you're in the club's colors. Uh, the sentence included a 30-month sentence he received later after he was found guilty of having committed an indecent act by having sex on the hood of a car parked on the side of the public roadway. Uh, he was granted day parole, but before he could leave the Penitentiary Correctional Service Canada, was advised by police that they believed his life was in danger. No halfway house was willing to take the risk of having him as a resident. So, he was assaulted. That's the basis of the story. Now, let's go to Corey Graff's wall of shame, baby. Miramar, police officer arrested on suspicion of DUI in the Florida Keys. Right now, a Miramar officer under arrest accused of driving under the influence. Lamaso Espresanto was arrested in Isle Morada and booked into jail on Sunday. Miramar police say the officer was immediately placed on administrative leave with pay pending the outcome of the investigation. Okay, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> anyway... Uh, he was behind the wheel of a black Ford 150 that was seen swerving and struggling to stay in its lane around 7 p.m. Ain't that, uh, it's funny, 
that keys thing that just comes to mind you know where you got that big uh, highway that goes from the tip of florida to the keys that has to be nerve-wracking what do you guys do when there's a big storm and the waves come over oh man nuts uh, an officer pulled him over said he could smell a distinct order of alcoholic beverage coming from inside of the vehicle uh his eyes were bloodshot watery and glassy he was taken in the custody after failing the field sobriety test well you know at least they're starting to do something there's you ever notice there ain't that uh blue wall anymore where the uh, there probably is but you see it in the newspaper where they're really going off on these guys so we're gonna take a uh, quick uh, little break uh, baby and we're gonna be back with my final thought Get your copy of New Age of Biden and Brotherhood by Insane Throttle's very own James Hollywood Machikari. New Age of Biden and Brotherhood will take you on a journey of the past and present fighters. Get your copy on Amazon and all major book retailers. Rock on. Rock on, baby. Don't forget to hit subscribe when on whatever platform you're on. Follow us on Spotify, iTunes. And, of course, YouTube and Facebook. Also, man, you want to get over and check out the Hollywood and China Doll show. We got six episodes up already. It's Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And it's not your run-of-the-mill freaking uh, podcast. It really isn't, man. We get raw on that sucker. Uh, so get on over there if you're a YouTube follower. Just jump right on the channel, man. You just see it in the description box. So, my final thoughts. Hmm. Now, actually, uh, I did want to answer one question again that was sent to me. Uh, people, if you've watched my program, if you listen to it on uh, the radio stuff, you'll notice that I talk about RC clubs a lot. And the question was, why do I talk about RCs a lot? <laughs> uh, the riding clubs, I believe, in my personal opinion, are the truest form to what traditional clubs started out to be. If you know your history, a lot of clubs started as racing clubs. And from there, it went and evolved to what it is today. But riding clubs, on the other hand, there's it, it takes you back to that time period where you're riding with buddies, you're doing your thing, it ain't that damn serious, and you enjoy a lot more. I believe RCs are probably the best way to go if you're trying to get into some organization. Motorcycle clubs, I'm not bashing on them, but they're at a different type of deal because there's a lot more involvement with motorcycle clubs. There's a lot more responsibility. And riding clubs is just that, riding clubs. You go out there, ride with your buddies, go party. Uh, and you're, you got the same amount of brotherhood. You're just not involved in the politics. Now, I got a moto vlog. Actually, yeah, I told you guys I'd be doing some moto vlogs with you. Don't know how many more I'm going to be doing. It's freaking freezing out there can't believe how quick it got cold here but of course the farmer's uh almanac did say it's going to be cold uh, get your uh, snowmobile suits going on this year uh but anyway i am uh trying to get as much of as i can in on that one and i'm going to be talking about rcs i did talk about it uh, in another segment but i think it's important to expand on the subject uh maybe how to get one going uh what you should do what you shouldn't do a lot of people get confused about the protocol stuff, and I know at least in my area, if you're not acting like a motorcycle club, then there's usually no damn problems, because you're just a riding club. A lot of clubs don't have time to screw with you. It's when you start acting it, that's where the problems come. Or if you're using the motorcycle club as a spring or uh, the riding club as a springboard to the motorcycle club, 
yeah, you're going to have issues because you crossed the damn line. You got away from what you were supposed to be doing, and you're trying to act like something you're not. See, a lot of people talk about pop-up clubs a lot. You know, the clubs that don't follow through on protocol and stuff. And my reasoning's always been, why do you have to have the three-piece? Do a riding club with a single patch, man. You get the same amount of brotherhood, and you get a lot more riding most of the time. Sad to say, and I hate to say this because I'm probably going to get pushed back on it. A lot of MCs nowadays are bar-to-bar -bar type of deal, man. You don't get a lot of hardcore riding in. Uh, you know, I don't know in your area, but that's what I hear a lot. You don't get that much riding in. And an RC, that's what it's meant to be. RCs, I know, not only the riding, they go to a lot of hill climbs, they go to a lot of flat track racing. They really get into the traditional way everybody came up. Now, I know a lot of people out there in the pop-up club say, well, we established to be the traditional way. You don't know your history, man. That's not how it is. It was, uh, I don't know what history you're talking about, but that's not how the MC stuff, you know, got going. And that's what it wasn't about, so stop using that crap. If that makes any sense, if it don't, oh well, put it in the question box and I'll answer it, I guess. You know, I don't talk about protocol, I leave that to the other stations, because I am mainly biker news, but I'm a, I'm a real big advocate of riding clubs, so I'll talk about riding clubs. So that's what that monologue is going to be about, uh, or not monologue, moto vlog on uh, Saturday. It's going to be released on YouTube, uh, Facebook. I uh, think about 8 p.m. Central, or 8 p.m. or not 8 p.m. 8 a.m. My fault, man. I got a brain fart here. I need to get some 420. You know what it is? Is my freaking knees have been killing me and stuff. I haven't been able to work out because the weight's crushing the knee. So I'm sitting here like, damn, man, I'm looking behind me. There's my freaking corn cob pipe ready to go to get rid of the freaking pain. Anyway, enough about that. The thing about the Pagans and a lot of, uh, I'd have to say all the clubs are going to have to start worrying about is these freaking uh, groups that law enforcement are getting together. And you heard it right there in New Jersey. That's very similar to uh, the Stripe Course Raptor. And all that jive that Australia has where they really just targeted clubs. Now, there used to be the BET, the Biker Enforcement uh, Unit, but it wasn't as prevalent as these things that happen over in Australia. And a lot of clubs should be worried about that. And like I said, a lot of clubs have uh, tightened the reins on people doing stupid stuff and leading it back to the club because you get this kind of BS going and the club's all in the spotlight. And like you heard during that uh, commission report, when he said the pagans do not approve of that type of stuff. They don't condone it. They don't direct people to do it. And I think that was a very smart move to get that on public record because you already know that these people are going to try to RICO them. That's what everything's being set up as. You know, law enforcement is getting together and saying, you know what, we need to do this and do that, which I don't understand why they're going after the clubs. Now, they say they're hurting the citizens. They're, you know, show me an instance. If you have an event that took place where you know if a club went after somebody who was an innocent civilian, please give me your freaking sources and i will look at it and i will come back on the show and say hey you know we had this incident right here and here's the source but i really don't believe that man i do not believe clubs go after the general citizens because they know it's going to bring all kinds of freaking heat on them they know they're going to be called a motorcycle gang for doing it or a biker gang so give me that source. I don't think they did it, man. I just think that's something the New Jersey Commission just put out there to scare the general public. And where their numbers are get coming from, you know, most clubs won't tell you how many no numbers there are unless you have a freaking rat, which again, yes, I know everybody that bashes clubs are going to come back and say, yeah, you know, even one percenters have uh, cops in them. You know, they just don't know about it. Boy, have I heard that over the last 
freaking 25, 30 years. <laughs> that has been freaking nonsense the whole damn time. Uh, we know you don't have to keep rubbing it in. That's what they do. They're sneaky little freaking busybodies, these cops. And it all starts from a guy who's slinging this or dealing that. They bring it all onto the club, and that is actually BS. I actually would have to argue that ain't true brotherhood, because true brotherhood, you wouldn't be bringing that kind of heat on your club. So how is that true brotherhood? It ain't. Anyway, you know, I really like, you know, it's not a mainstream article, but hopefully other news agencies will start picking it up. Don't cross your freaking fingers that this study was totally bogus on the Sturgis state. And boy, did I rag on for 20, 30 minutes in the last segment about how the media is in this country. So I don't think I need to go and, uh, you know, regurgitate that crap because we all know how they are. It's sad, but it's true. As of now, only 200 and something cases. And this happened in the beginning of August. So you know there'd be a huge uptick coming in right now. It hasn't uh, happened. It hasn't. So that's what you got to watch out for. It wasn't even peer-reviewed, for Christ's sakes. But, because the media hates this current administration, that's what's going to happen. It is unbelievable with all the charity work that bikers do, that they are targeted the way they are. It's not only motorcycle clubs being targeted, now it's regular independents, riding clubs, hell, they call uh, BACA a gang now. How the hell do you say that? They take care of kids. They fight for kids. But now you're calling them that? I've seen that in the newspaper. And what was great after our listeners seen that, they contacted that newspaper and they freaking retracted it. That's what you need to do when you see me reading these articles. If you don't agree with them, Write the letter to the editors. Force them to either take it down, retract it, or put up the damn truth. That's what you need to do because it works. It worked with that story where that broad put in there, Baca was a biker gang. I hope you guys do it anyway. Uh, again, the racer that uh, died, man, was he a freaking a legend. 69 years old. Can you believe that? Most people at 69 are in a freaking uh, old folks home. Here he is trying to break 300 miles an hour. That was just freaking aw. Uh, that was great, man. That was great. But it's sad that uh, he got caught in the wobble from the wind. And at least he made it three weeks. That shows you how tough his ass was. Shows you how tough he was. Uh, other than that, uh, the Montreal story, uh, what that guy has uh, said is BS. Uh, it actually uh, came back in 2010 uh, out of Peg City, I believe, if not Montreal, one of the two. Uh, but from what I hear, he's out on bad any damn way. Uh, but anyway, don't forget, don't forget to get over there on uh, Hollywood and the China Dow evening shows YouTube channel spotify itunes everywhere go to harleyliberty.com baby get some more biker news that i haven't covered on the show i know you'll love it man with that don't forget to subscribe you guys have a good one man So you want to know how to support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts, the rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now, rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com, get all your motorcycle club news, what's happening in the scene? 
we have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news, motorcycle rallies, and bikers helping the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. Mwah.